What's going on guys? This is Chris with Azrael's Pit Barbecue and welcome to our first video in our brand new vlog series. And in this series, we're basically going to be in an informal setting, shooting the breeze with you guys and just see what's on your mind, what's on my mind and just what's going on in general. If you have any questions, comments, topics you want to discuss, anything like that, put it in the comment section below as well as other comment sections in other videos and this is where we will address those types of things and, and talk about that stuff. Uh, I, I want to get to know you guys, and I want you guys to know me and who I am and where I'm coming from. You know, why should you watch my videos? Why do I make these videos? Who the heck is that guy Chris anyways? And what's up with that hair? <laughs> Got a haircut, hippie. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I thought in the first video it made the most sense if maybe I actually told you a little bit about myself, my background, where I'm coming from, and really why I'm trying to do this, this channel, albeit slowly. So first and foremost, as you know, my name's Chris. I live in Franklin, Tennessee, which is just southwest outside of beautiful Nashville, and I am 45 years old, and this will come no surprise to anybody, I am an AV design engineer. I have formal schooling as an audio engineer for recording industry, which is how I ended up in Nashville in the first place. And I have pretty much been doing something with audio and video and production and that kind of thing my entire life, all the way back to high school where I had a small sound business and I used to go around and run sound for bands and that kind of thing. Uh, I currently am an AV design engineer for a large global company where we specialize in digital communication and audio video integration for your corporate and education and government type customers. Um, it's a far cry from actual production, but I really enjoy this type of stuff and, and playing around with it. Oddly enough, in all my experience of editing and production work and all that kind of stuff, video editing is something I haven't really spent a lot of time on. So this has been a big learning curve for me, but as a self-proclaimed geek, I very much enjoy this side of it. So it goes hand in hand with my passion for cooking and then lets me geek out after the fact to make the videos that I'm making today. And if you go back and look at our videos, there aren't that many, you've got time to look at all of them. But if you go back and look at the videos, you can literally see the progress that we have made. I learned something new after every video that we make when I'm doing the post editing on it to figure out how do I do something better? How do I make something look better? Because in this day of multimedia, point and click, instant information, whiz bang flap, and, you know, bells and whistles and flash and wiggles, you know, I really wanted something that not only visually captures your attention and also, you know, keeps that information getting out there in an interesting way. So, as a kid growing up, uh, single parents, parents were divorced, and so I lived with my mom and my brother, and so there was kind of a lot of fending for yourself and all that kind of thing, and I really enjoyed cooking, even at a young age. Um, you know, once I got old enough to start playing with fire and, and working with grills and that kind of thing, I really kind of enjoyed that. But I would say that the passion of the, the, of the hobby, where it became a hobby, um, to where it became a you know part of my life as it is today. I can say it started back in 1998 where I was living in St. Charles, Missouri, just outside of St. Louis, uh, and I got invited to a barbecue. And I went to the barbecue, and first and foremost, they were making ribs, and they were beer boiling their ribs. Don't boil your ribs, kids. Just say no. Uh, I had never seen ribs get boiled before and it was odd and then they proceeded to take said ribs put them on an extremely hot flame shooting out of it grill and that was their ribs and um they were horrible and i remember thinking man there's got to be a better way and i had never never really cooked ribs before so that really kicked it off to me you know to go figure out how to cook ribs because those were so bad Prior to that, I kind of had grown up with the South Carolina uh, style of barbecue, the, the, the kind of stuff that you would see out in like say Columbia, South Carolina, that kind of thing. Mustard based sauces, whole hog, chopped up, cooked in a pit, in the ground, 
that type of barbecue. My mom's side of the family is from South Carolina. Spent a lot of time out in that area growing up. And uh, you know, back then, Piggy Park barbecue sauce was the bomb. I thought it was so great. We now make our own mustard-based sauce that is much, much better. But as a kid, and the nostalgia of that and that type of cooking really kind of intrigued me. So as a young adult, I really kind of gravitated towards that and just I just over the years it has just grown and trying to figure out how to do new things and I spent probably a decade of doing some really bad cooking you know on your kind of cheap offsets that you get at the big stores the big box stores and I think it was probably four years ago um, I again got into this there's got to be a better way and I had done bullet cookers and your your Brinkman's and your char grillers and all that kind of stuff and I had started doing some research on a what would be a really good cooker and I really like offsets but offsets are a pain in the ass man and uh, it, it, we're gonna do a whole video on that in, in the barbecue 101 series once we get that going but that's when I discovered reverse flow and I started looking into reverse flow cookers in general, did a lot of research on it, and I decided to get a Lang uh, 36 hybrid runabout because one of the things I needed to do is I needed to be able to travel with my cooker because I was constantly being asked to take my cooker places and we were putting it on a trailer and strapping it down. And that really beats the crap out of welds and screws and bolts and stuff of your cheaper cookers that are just really designed to sit in your backyard or on a porch or something. So we ended up getting the Lang, and when I got the Lang, I switched from cooking with charcoal to straight wood fire and became a stick burner. And once I did that, man, it was a whole new game. And the barbecue that we were cooking, the food that was coming off of that pit, just once we figured out the fire and what woods to use and really how to run that thing, it was like overnight, it seemed, the, the quality and the taste and just everything about what I had been doing for so long just just suddenly went to a whole new level. So that's kind of where we are now. I'm still cooking on that Lang 36. Kind of want a bigger one. I've been looking at getting a, a bigger pit for some time. Um, it's expensive. It was a pretty good investment. It took me a while to put that money together to buy that thing. But I am so happy with that purchase and absolutely would do it again, although I'd probably get a bigger one if I did. While barbecue cooking is just a major, it, it's, it's, it's not a hobby. It, it is a passion. It is a part of my life. It's just it's something that I enjoy doing so much and to the point to where you know we make our own sauces we make our own rubs you know we're trying to get the freshest product we even go and kill hogs at a good old-fashioned country you know hog killing every year uh, up at a friend's farm in kentucky and we use that fresh meat for our sauces and that kind of stuff and we try to cook with as little processed ingredients as possible and i think that's one of the things that makes our cue as good as we think it is is we really are taking that extra step we don't use a lot of uh bottled and bagged prefab stuff um you know and i'm talking the stuff you buy at the store not necessarily stuff that you know other people make and sell um you know that are kind of like me but they sell stuff um you know i'm talking like that high production run stuff that has preservatives in it and the anti-caking and the whatever and the msgs and all the million things that our MSG but don't say MSG we took all of that out of our cooking as much as possible and it really makes a difference and we're constantly striving to see how do we make that better for example our barbecue sauce is a ketchup based you know tomato based so you use ketchup well we use a ketchup that is you know we think is you know a good solid ketchup but it is a mass-produced product so it has all those other things in it what if we made our own ketchup and then use that as the base for our sauce? That's the type of thing that I enjoy doing and really making something my own, my flavor profile. You can't get it anywhere else unless you come to my house. In addition to cooking barbecue, I do have other hobbies. Uh, we go motorcycle riding. 
I enjoy sim racing. I enjoy sport cracking with bull whips. And I enjoy just geeking out in general. This, making these videos lets me and take several things that I really like doing and put it in one place. And that is cooking, obviously, the production side of it, the post-production side of it, figuring out how to do the editing and learning the programming to do the editing and, and you know, seeing what looks good and what's crap and stuff. I actually spend probably somewhere between six to eight hours on every video in post-production uh, before I actually put a video up. Everything's that's just editing um, and you know these videos aren't that long even though my videos tend to be a little bit longer than others you know it, there's a lot of effort involved in doing the research and getting the graphics or creating the graphics and that kind of stuff I really love doing that piece of it that's where the that's where the geek in me really gets to come out um, so that's something that uh, th this opportunity and what we're doing here takes a lot of things and puts it all together for me to really enjoy and I do get kind of get the family all involved and you know Amy's involved and uh, even the kids get involved from time to time so we do other stuff but man barbecue at the end of the day is the big thing so in the process of doing all this stuff with barbecue and trying to do things as you know naturally as possible is how I kind of stumbled onto the home sausage making piece of it. So we're killing hogs. Our friends were making sausage, and I was like, "Man, I want to make sausage." And and they're they're buying a some kind of breakfast sausage mix and that kind of stuff. And so I went and bought some books, did some research, and got a grinder and and that kind of thing, and and started my own hand at making sausage. And now we make breakfast sausage that you can do in patties. We make breakfast sausage in links. Um, we're, we're making brats. We we make frankfurters uh we make irish bangers uh we're messing around with playing making things like um uh liverwurst and and all kinds of stuff it's so much fun and there's so much freedom in it and you know it's it's just part of that hobby and and interest it's, it's so cool to be able to expand from what started out as one little thing there's there's so much to do um, and I just love it. I enjoy it. I wish I could do this professionally because I love it that much. So it had been suggested to me that I should make some YouTube videos on the cooking stuff. And if you look at the very first video we ever did, which was a beef back ribs video in 2015, if I remember correctly, I said in that video, you know, that I didn't feel like I had much to offer. Um, I thought about that, you know, there's tons of videos out on YouTube about how to do this and how to do that. So I don't really, didn't really feel like I had anything to add. All that information is out there. A lot of the information that I've used uh, to kind of step up my barbecue cooking and whatnot has come from AmazingRibs.com. There is so much information out there and so many people are so far down the road when it comes to making the YouTube videos. You know, what am I going to bring to the table? And really what I thought about was is I really started thinking about Alton, Br Alton Brown and the show Good Eats. I loved that show and I love watching Alton Brown. I am I am such a fanboy of Alton Brown. It's ridiculous. I love how he takes he really explains things to you. It's not just a cooking show. There's science behind the cooking and you know, to understand that. So it 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 was stimulated the geek side of me. It stimulated the cooker side of me and and it just really just sucked me in. And so I was like, what if I could do that? So I went and looked at a ton and ton of YouTube channels and tried to see how many people were really doing instructional videos beyond the put get this meat, put on this rub, put it at this temperature. You know, beyond that, you know, where does this meat come from? What's the difference in the cuts? You know, what's really going on on these low and slow cooks? And, you know, uh, all those things. And, you know, it's more beyond doing this, but why we do this. And I really love teaching as well. I've done tons of instructional classes and that kinds of things and certification classes, all from a technical standpoint. And I teach people almost 
every day I'm giving training and doing stuff for folks when it comes to what I do for a living. And I have found uh, very much so, like, like any teacher does, you know, you learn so much by sharing that knowledge and teaching others. Not only is there the repetition of, of giving that information out, going beyond the muscle memory and just going through the motions of what you know and talking about it really sharpens that detail up in your own mind. And then the interaction, people asking you questions, what about this, what about that? And you sometimes, you know, you've got the answers and it's there and it reinforces what you know. And then somebody hits you with something that you don't know, you gotta go find that out. And I love figuring things out and going and learning new stuff. So whenever I make videos, uh, you know, some, if I'm doing something new or whatever, I will basically say, okay, uh, what do I need to know for myself? And whatever I had to learn to do that cook or convey that information, that's what I'm showing you. My goal with this channel initially, when I started thinking about what could I bring to the table, I was like, all right, what are my strengths beyond what I'm doing with this cooking? And it's the AV geek in me and take it to the next level. Can I bring a better quality than just having, you know, Joe Bob camera set up? Nothing wrong with that, by the way. This is just how I'm separating myself from the pack. I want to be part of this group, but I do want to stand out in my own right, just like any other YouTuber would. You know, what makes me special or why would somebody come look at my channel? And I'm hoping that at the end of the day, it's going to be the information, the energy that, and passion that I bring to these videos and the production quality, which we are constantly striving to improve. And I hope that makes it an enjoyable experience for my viewers all 105 of them, and hopefully that'll be way more in the future. But for now, that's really the goal, just sharing the passion. I'm not looking to make money off this. I'm not looking for anything else. However, if anybody from the Food Network is watching these videos, call me. Do I cook in competitions? No, I do not. Would I like to? Maybe, I don't know, man. You know, I've I've done a lot of research on competition cooking and the one common thing I have found is, man, what those people are putting out for competition, they're not feeding their families and friends. You know, you think about it, you wanna sit down and enjoy some barbecue. Those guys are cooking for the purpose of that one bite wow. You know, so they're really pounding their barbecue with a lot of flavors and enhancers and all kinds of stuff. So those judges get that one bite that really stands out from all the freaking one bites they did that day. I don't want to cook food like that. I want to cook food that I want to eat. I want to cook food that my friends and family want to eat. Um, I want to cook food that I can hand to a stranger and they could say yes more as opposed to, whoo, after that second bite it's over because it's just pumped up and amped up so much. Um, I've, it's been suggested to me that, you know, I should do some competitions just for the experience of it and that kind of thing. Maybe one day I'll do that. But for now, that's just really not my goal and, and not really where I want to go. Uh, I don't have any desire to be, a, to try to be a champion, you know, barbecue cook. Man, if my family likes it and my friends like it, at the end of the day, that's enough for me. You know, could this turn into a business or something down the road? Maybe. And that would be awesome, but I'm not putting energy towards that end. So where's Ezreal's Pit Barbecue going on YouTube? I don't really know. Um, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. I really would like to make videos more often. Uh, sometimes there have been, well, not sometimes. I, I made a video and then it was months before I could make another video. And then it was months before I made another video. Every time I get geared up to feel like I'm really going to start making videos on at least somewhat regular basis, life gets in the way. My work has been chaos for the past 18 months, and I've really been struggling around that. Um, family life is a little bit crazy right now. We just had uh, one kid graduate high school, and he's getting ready to leave in the next month, two months, 
Uh, he's heading off to boot camp Paris Island. He's joining the Marines. Very proud of him. But as you can imagine, there's a lot going on with that. And there's a lot of emotion with that and pride and fear and uncertainty and that kind of stuff. Uh, the daughter is a senior in high school and she's you know, a marching band and an honor student and getting ready for college and all that's going on. And, and, and there's just so much happening right now. It's, it's very difficult for me to be able to sit down and make these videos. You know, as I mentioned earlier, there's quite a bit of time involved in this. I'm not just popping up a camera, doing my thing, slam editing and putting it out. Again, nothing wrong with that. But it's not what I want to do. I want the production quality and all that. So it takes more time to do that kind of stuff. It's not as easy to just do some ad hoc stuff. And maybe I should do something a little more ad hoc, but I think it's going to take away from what I'm establishing for the videos that we're making. So I would rather not put out content than put out a subpar content once, you know, once I've kind of set the bar a certain level and then coming up under it. Um, it's kind of a catch-22 a little bit. I've kind of put myself in a, in a bit of a corner here. Uh, so I've got to figure out how to balance these things. So the vlogs are going to help. I can put out content and communicate with you guys and we can hopefully have some value. And this is easy peasy. Pop a camera up, sit down, shoot the shit. Um, if, um, if I'm doing, I'm going to do some shorts where I'm going to maybe not do instructional videos, but I will bang up some cameras while I'm doing something and then just kind of make a short of that, almost a teaser of, hey, here's a video coming. So for instance, I have one where we made breakfast sausage. It was the first time I made breakfast sausage in Lynx. So I didn't really, I recorded it, but I didn't make a video on it because I was figuring it out. I'll take that video, edit it down and put it out as a short. And then later we will actually do an instructional video on how we did that. At the end of the day, if you watch the sausage making 101 videos, uh, home sausage making where we talk about making our grinds and grinders. I've got another one we're going to put out about stuffing in general. And then once you take those two, there's really not much to make. Every video after that is making your sausage batter, stuffing your sausage batter, however you're going to do that. So once we get the two big ones out of the way, one we've already done, stuffing is coming. Then when it comes to making sausage, we're just talking recipes about here's how we make breakfast sausage, here's how we make bratwurst and everything else. And all the information about grinding and stuffing and those products and how to prep for it and all that is already done. We're not going to sit there and just keep rinsing and repeating that information. So that'll make for faster and shorter videos. It's getting towards the fall. It's sausage making time. So expect to see a lot of that coming. And I have been asked about making on Dewey. That video is coming this fall. Uh, we're going to show a multi-day where we're making the andouille, drying the andouille, smoking the andouille, and then we're going to do videos on cooking with that andouille, stuff like gumbo and rice and beans. So that one topic is going to be able to be multiple videos that we can all build from. And as we're doing this stuff, feedback from you all is going to help guide me of what you're interested in and that kind of stuff. And you come up with something crazy oddball, I will ignore it. But you come up with some good ideas, we'll talk about it and we'll do it. Well guys, I guess that's about it for this video. I really don't know what else to say. To be honest with you, I'm kind of uncomfortable with this right now. It's a little different. Um, you know, I'm used to not being scripted, but I am used to being structured. And this is a little more kind of, I jotted down some notes and some stuff to talk about and I'm just kind of, BS in here. So uh, hopefully uh, you got a little bit of an insight of who I am. I would love to know who you are and hopefully we'll have lots more of these and have some more chats down the road. So I don't know what you guys are doing but I'm actually on vacation this week so I'm getting ready to go make some sauce, make some rub and start making uh, fire up the pit for some baby back ribs which has been requested for dinner tonight. And uh, then tomorrow, I am actually going to be making some breakfast sausage and some brats. So I'll get some video of that. Last thing before I go, I want to shout out some other channels. I want to shout out at TNT, man. TNT was the first one that ever commented on a, on a video of mine. And man, go check him out. Links below. Lyle at No Hippie Barbecue. Man, love your videos. I don't know how you're putting out the content that you do. It's just, it, and it's so varied. I really love it. And I got to apologize right now if you're watching this. 
dude, I am not YouTube stalking you, but I've got a list of videos that I want to make, and every it seems like at least once a week you put out a video, and I go, ah, there's another one I was going to make. But I think it's okay. Uh, I think we all need to share our ideas, and there's only so many topics you can do. Uh, I think the one that threw me the most recently was your uh, video on cheesesteaks. Uh, uh, I make cheesesteaks on a griddle and you know we get ribeye meat and we freeze it and all this kind of stuff and slice it nice and thin and uh, the, the kids were like you need to make a cheesesteak video for your you know in the kitchen on the stove type videos and I'm like yes I do and then freaking no heavy barbecue puts out that video and I was like ah oh. so man I am not stalking you I really appreciate your videos man and keep it up you guys check out no heavy barbecue links below Heavy Metal Barbecue. Brother, I so appreciate your energy and your enthusiasm for what you know, comments you've made. And I've read comments and stuff in your videos, and I really dig. Even, even if somebody talks crap to you, man, you are so cool and so positive about your responses. I really appreciate that. Man, you guys go check out Heavy Metal Barbecue. Again, link below. And last but not least... Phil and Florence, man, I really per appreciate your energy as well. Your positive comments, you, you know, you're like, hey man, come back. And I was, I was trying to get back to make some videos. I really appreciate uh, your comments on my videos and what you're doing. And, you know, I really dig watching your progress as you're figuring things out and, you know, going down your barbecue journey as well. So guys, go check out and support Phil and Florence. And then finally... I'm going to have to call out How to Barbecue Right, Malcolm Reed's channel. If you have not checked it out, you've got to check it out. He has got tons of content, really good stuff, lots of different cookers. This is a competition cook, and you know when it comes to looking at the pros, if you will, Malcolm Reed is very much one of my go-to channels. So links to all of those guys below. But the first four, TNT, No Hippie Barbecue, Heavy Metal Barbecue, and Phil and Florence. What I love about these guys is they are just like me. You know, we're just some backyard cooks, just doing our thing and sharing our passion. And man, that's really what it's all about. If, you know, if you're going to have social media, then let's be social. And that's what everybody's doing. And anybody who's putting the time to put stuff together and putting themselves out there, which is risky to do, and, and take some courage to sit down and get in front of a camera and really put yourself out there the way they do. And, you know, keep it real. You know, keep it accessible. I really dig that. And I appreciate every single one of these guys. And I encourage you all to go check out their channels. Well, guys, that just about wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button. And I want to hear from you. Get down to that comment section below. Tell me what you think. What's on your mind? What do you want to talk about? Man, it is basically Texas no limit here. Whatever you want, with one exception. No politics. Yeah, we're not talking about politics on this channel. Ever. I'm going to leave you guys with a sneak peek at our new intro video segment that you will start seeing in all of our videos coming up in the future. In the meantime, man, I hope you guys are having a great day. Keep that smoke rolling, and we'll see you next time.